As we all know that technology is something that we all use on a day-to-day -day basis. And this has become a necessity um, in terms of how we are keeping our children entertained um, when we're not entertaining them. And so this is where it becomes important. And as we know, you know, there can be some good, some bad that comes from technology, uh, certain toys that our children may play with. And so it becomes really important to focus on what can I do more of or what 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 are some issues that may be happening? And so, you know, as we look at some of the negative impacts, as we know, you know, research shows that there are um, ex uh, factors that really impact kids negatively of increased screen time. Um, we know that it really impacts childhood obesity, um, where there's a lack of just interactive play. So, um, you know, I've seen this in families that I work with and even just personal experiences where it's become a norm for children to just sit on their iPads, on their phones. Um, they're communicating with their peers through those. They're, you know, just watching um, YouTube videos on kids opening gifts and, you know, things like that. I think those are the, the new norm of what kids enjoy doing these days. And so we have to be really, really vigilant on how much time is being spent um, on actual interactive play. And the more we incorporate interactive play is that we can reduce some of these negative things that now we're seeing. Um, and the other thing with uh, increase of technology is sleep disturbances. Um, the research now currently shows that more kids are having sleep issues um, as compared to about 10 years ago. So, you know, as we look at these external factors um, impacting just that development, we know that sleep is really, really essential to how we function on a day to day. And it's very important for kids. So it's really important for kids to have a healthy routine um, healthy bedtime routine of what this looks like. If we, are we turning off these screens? Are we, you know, limiting playtime right before they go to bed? Are we actually having some downtime um, to have them, you know, be able to get some good quality sleep? And this is where now we look at how dependent are children becoming on these things. And when we talk about attachment, we talk about bonding, you know, we know um, every child has something that they take around with them, something that they become really, really attached with, whether it's for comfort, whether it's for security, um, you know, there, there's that term of like the security blanket just goes everywhere. Um, and so th this is, we, we can look at this two different ways, you know, from the clinical perspective, we look at, you know, what is that need to have, to be dependent on this? Um, and as we look at toys, we look at screens, uh, technology of any kind, we look at these security items, you know, my question is always like, well, what is the child wanting to attach to? What is this bonding happening with this item? Um, so we, we come to know that and kids become so preoccupied, they become, this is the norm, like, hey, I, I don't want to interact with you, so take this, go sit in the corner, and this is what you're going to do now. So that becomes a normalized behavior. And so now we're actually instilling uh, in this younger generation that... I don't have time for you, so technology is going to be that caregiver. You know, everything that you need, you'll be learning from this piece of technology. And so as parents, you know, it becomes really important to identify how attached is my child. And, you know, one example, if you're really, really struggling with, and one way to find out if your child is attached to something, uh, a, a toy, um, their iPad, um, you know, whatever it may be, is to know, you know, how much first, how much time are they spending on that? And again, it's always that self-assessment of, am I instilling this as a normalized behavior on a day-to-day -day base, or am I allowing only a structured out time of how much time they're using? And so when we look at structure, we have to look at that rules and discipline that come along with structure at times. And again, as we all know, 
uh, kids don't like a lot of rules. Uh, they they don't like discipline when those rules are broken. Um, so being able to implement those and being able to have that conversation with the child about what the rule is and what the expectation is and what the expectation is if they're not able to fulfill um, the other expectation. Uh, so that discipline piece comes in and, you know, as parents, it's important to discuss, not only to say, you know, this is the rule. You're not able to watch uh, TV or your, um, you know, iPad at nighttime and that's it. But if we break those rules, then we're able to say, hey, the reason these rules are in place, I want to help you understand. And the more we kind of understand and the more research is done around just the psychology of kids and those developmental years, you know, kids are very, again, very, very um, smart and very um, adult-like at times, you know. So when you're able to bring it down to their level and you're able to really treat them as a sense of, hey, we're a, we're going to collaborate on this um, rather than say, I am the parent, so you have to listen to me because that only causes um, – discord within the relationship so it's very important to have those conversations of the reason this rule is in place you know i want you to get certain hours of sleep and we know that um you know health professionals say kids uh, under the age of 10 should be getting anywhere from 10 to 12 hours of sleep um you know that definitely gets a little bit um less and less as we get older um, but those important times of de the development piece, because the sleep is really needed, just as diet has a big impact on it. Sleep is also something that's um, really needed. And so as we implement this structure, we implement these rules and discipline, we have to just have the conversations um, and letting the child know this is what's the expectation. Now, as I um, said in an earlier section, when we're implementing minimizing screen time right before bed we're also doing that ourselves so whether it be you know if we're all turning off the internet at a certain time and i know that's really hard but this is where we have to make those sacrifices as adults of what am i instilling in the child and how am i modeling this behavior so we have to practice it ourselves um and to be able to let the child know that they need to practice this the number one things parents, new parents, parents who've had multiple children uh, really struggle with bedtime. We know bedtime is usually the hardest um, to have the child really unwind um, at nighttime and get to bed, especially those younger ones. Um, you, you know, I, I'm sure most of you at home watching this are probably like, yeah, that's that it sucks. I don't know what to do. I, you know, it's a hassle every single night to get them to wash up, to get into their PJs. And, and so when we're thinking about the scaffolding, we're bringing that back in and we're really looking at how can I build on this skill? How can I help them learn? Um, one, you know, we're going to show them what I do um, as a parent and you know what they're able to do and what i can help them do so you know we also have to look at the age appropriateness of the skills that we're teaching them so with bedtime you know with getting dressed i know for the younger children that may be a little bit difficult so really helping them but also teaching them that independence and so bedtime is usually uh, the the best time that you could do a routine um, and so when you have a certain routine, so if it's, you know, eight o'clock is bedtime, but we need to prep and we need to brush our teeth, we need to wash our face, we need to get into our PJs. So when we put the structure in place, that that is going to, and the routine, that is only going to help the child learn new behaviors um, and really practice the behaviors that they may be um, really falling on. So, and so whether it's brushing our teeth, whether, whether it's taking a shower, whether it's washing our face, whatever it may be at nighttime that that routine looks like for you, having that certain same routine every single night is only going to help build on the skills that you're learning. Now, the other thing that you can definitely implement, and we all as human beings love this, we love rewards, we love, we love incentives, and children at most really love being incentivized for what they're doing. Um, whether it's, you know, letting them know like, hey, if we're able to do, you know, the, this routine for a week, 
um, maybe on the weekend, uh, we can have some kind of dessert that they really liked uh, to eat. So having those incentives in place is only going to help. And so this is where it becomes important to um, talk about, you know, what are the um, disciplinary actions that may come in place? What are the consequences? And so if they're not able to fulfill it, you know, I would say just as much as we're doing incentives, also having some consequences, but that communication is going to help. So communicating with them, I want to help you learn, and I know that this is going to help. Um, you know, if we reward ourselves, we only want to do it more and more because we know that reward is coming. When there's consequences, we want to do less of it because we don't want the consequence. So adding those incentives and with the structure and the routine, and again, we're scaffolding the skill. And so we're building on top of them. And the more you can build, the better it just becomes for that child to understand and be able to fully listen to what you're saying and learn this new behavior. So as we know, screen time can be both helpful and unhelpful, depending on what we're watching. And so for children, this is where it becomes the art of being a parent, of how we can find that healthy balance. Uh, we know that we're all really attached to our technology, so to eliminate it altogether would probably not be very doable. Um, especially if your children are already really used to um, spending some of that free time of watching a TV show or they're playing a game or whatever it may be. Um, so an, an important thing for a parent is to find that healthy balance of how much time is being spent and what that time is, what kind of content that time is being spent on. So if we're really intentional and about what the children are viewing, uh, what they're playing, you know, what we can definitely let them play something where they're not learning anything and they're just really shooting balls um, or whatever that game may be. But if we can be very intentional of the types of games that they're playing. Um, and I know at times with children, you really have to um, make them look at something that as fun, maybe they don't find it fun. So, you know, how can we be more interactive and in helping them learn. So we'll definitely talk about more of that playful parenting and we'll, you know, but finding that good balance of how much time away from the screen are we taking? So, you know, I would definitely highly recommend, you know, if it's an hour, um, after an hour, check in with your child, you know, make them get up, make them do something a little interactive. Maybe it's a chore. Um, so if we're using screen time as an incentive, you know, maybe have them do something um, that they need to, uh, whether it be schoolwork, whether it be a chore, or maybe you just uh, want to interact with them as a parent. And so you bring them into the kitchen, like, hey, I'm doing this, you just want to help me you know, do this task, something very simple of taking the pot out or uh, putting water in something. So the more we can interact, the more we can replace some of the screen time. And again, then this just helps build that attachment, gives more of the opportunity for you to communicate and for the child to communicate and for you just to learn uh, from their behaviors. And we'll definitely get more into um, how we can bring interactive parenting into the way we're interacting um, and how we can bring it into the playtime uh, of the children on a day-to-day -day tasks.